Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm going to be talking about my favourite Goodreads books from over eight years ago. It was really fun the other day, I started looking through books that I had read from a really long time ago and like reminiscing about books that I had enjoyed, books that I probably don't enjoy if I reread them now and ones that I hated back from when I was in school and reading. Um, I didn't even have Goodreads initially, so I've just put these books as eight plus years ago, but I probably read them when I was younger as well, like in school. Um, it's just that when, that's when I first started using Goodreads, this was the first books that I had on there, and these ones are ones that I all rated really high stars. So let's just get straight into it. So the first book that we have gotten is Fallen by Lauren Kate. This is a four book series. Um, it is a big romance novel, but also paranormal. It follows a girl called Luce, who goes to the school that is actually filled with angels, but she doesn't know that. And there's obviously this deep, deep past and secret that she's not really being let in, let in on, and she has to kind of discover that. I remember absolutely being in love with the series. I thought it was like the best romance in the entire world. I think if I read the series now, I definitely wouldn't have the same feelings, but I enjoy the nostalgia of the characters and this world, and it was one of those books that really got me into reading more books like this, and for that I was really thankful. This was also one of the first series that me and my mum read um, together, so we both really enjoy it, and when the movie came out we both thought it did it justice, but it was also really, really bad, because we realised how bad the storyline actually is. Next up is Anna Dressed in Blood by Candare Blake. This was one of the first horror novels that I ever read and I really enjoyed this. Um, I think if I reread it now, I would actually still really enjoy it. I'm pretty sure the plot of this was very thoughtful, unique and creative. Um, I still don't think I've really read anything quite like this. Um, so it follows a guy called Cass who is basically like a teenage paranormal hunter and he comes across Anna who is a ghost that's stuck in his house and he decides to try to help her find out why she's stuck in his house whilst dealing with other paranormal problems. This book I'm pretty sure is a two part series, a duology, um, and it has romance and it has the paranormal and it had a really fast paced plot that I can remember and I really enjoyed that and that's why I think I would still like it now if I reread it. There are two books on this pile that I had to read for school that I then also really enjoyed and fell in love with. The first one of those is Stolen by Lucy Christopher. This is a really unique novel. It's told from the point of view of a letter from a girl who was captured um, and taken to Australian rural outback where the man is trying to create a life for them. Um, and basically we follow their story. It has some pretty heavy topics um, and the point of view is really unique. And looking back, um, I really enjoyed aspects of this book, which I still enjoy to this day. It is set in the Australian outback, so as an Australian reader, there are parts that I can appreciate and relate to. But the story itself, I found when I read it, really resonated with Stockholm Syndrome. And um, the situation itself is very unique. And I think that the way that this was written did a lot of justice to the topic that it's being written about. I do wonder if I reread the book if it would still hit as hard as it originally did and if the author does as much justice with these topics as I originally believe so. Um, it'd be pretty interesting to hear someone's feedback if they've read this book recently. It came out quite a while ago and I don't really know very many people who have read it as well but I do remember reading it in school and I found that I just could not put the book down. And the next book that I picked up from school, which my brother has also stolen from the school library, which I now realise, um, this book was last, he brought this home in 2012, but I would have read it in 2010. So I would have read this book over 11 years ago. It's Destroying Avalon by Kate McCaffrey. This book, I can confidently say, was the one that got me back into reading in my teenage years. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but like when I was a kid, I read so many books. I loved to read, and then I went through high school, and all of a sudden it was like reading was not the thing to be doing. So I didn't read nowhere near as much as I used to, and then I had to read this book for school, and this lady, the author, Kate McCaffrey, was actually my teacher as well, and I fell back in love with reading. This book made me cry so much. This book hit really close to home. Um, it deals with bullying and online bullying, but also depression, suicide, self-harm, and things like that. It was very, very hard hitting, um, but I also found it was very much a must read for me in school and a lot of other kids. It not only opened a lot of people's eyes and made them a bit more conscious of what they were doing, but it's set in a setting like in Australia in a school just like ours with kids that were just like us too, and I think it made a big effect. This book, I would think if I reread it now, I would still cry my eyes out. I think that I might find it a little outdated in the sense. 
but I also think that it would have the same huge impact it had on me when I was in school. Um, so this book follows Avalon um, who moves to a new city um, and her life is turned upside down. She starts a new high school and finds herself in the centre of a brutal cyberbullying campaign. She gets obscene text messages and subject to increasingly vicious website postings as things spiral out of control. She's miserable and isolated and Avalon relies on a small group of friends, but as, she th as the threats escalate, is anyone safe? And then of course I jumped back on my paranormal bandwagon and I picked up Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. This was, I guess, my spiral of into paranormal romance and I think, looking back, I enjoyed this one more than I did Fallen. Once again, it's to do with angels um, and a human-angel relationship and I don't actually remember the entire series plotline, but I do remember reading this book and it features this like bad boy, um, kind of like your typical description of they can't get hotter than anybody else that you can visualise, and then it's this character. <sighs> Definitely reading back on it now, I probably wouldn't enjoy these books, but I bet they're really fast reads and you would go through them really quickly. Um, so if there's a character called Nora, she doesn't really want to be in love with anyone, and then she meets Patch, that's his name. Of course, romance is not easy for angels and humans, and Patch comes across as a bit terrifying at first, and then Nora falls probably heads over and heels in love with him because he's the bad boy and he likes her. But there's probably going to be a dark past from him since he is an angel. In this case, Nora is in the middle of a centuries-old battle between immortal and those that have fallen, and the wrong choice will cost her life. Once again, I don't really remember too much of the plot for this. I remember how it begins and I remember how it ends and some parts along the way. But I can't see myself enjoying this one if I went back into it. Next up is a very, very popular book. Um, and it still is a very popular series as the author continues to branch out from this world she created. And that is City of Bones, the first book in the Mortal Instruments. I have got this in the original covers and also the new ones because I think the spines on these are amazing and they look really, really good on the bookshelf. Um, so I couldn't help myself in buying these. And these books, obviously I don't need to talk about them too much. I don't know if everyone knows this, I really loved the Infernal Devices and I really, well, half enjoyed the Mortal Instruments. But as the series continued to branch out, I lost a lot of interest in the books and the series themselves. So I might be one of the very few people who hasn't read her new series, which I'm not even sure of the name of. Is it The Dark Artifices? Something like that. Um, I also watched the movie. I thought the movie was okay. I probably would have continued watching the movies if they made them, but for reasons that we all understand they didn't. And I watched a little bit of the Shadowhunters TV series, but I couldn't really, I guess, enjoy it as much um, because there was a lot of big differences. But uh, these books for me were like unputdownable. Everyone was talking about them, everyone was enjoying them, and I felt like I was a part of something bigger when I read these books and talked to people about these books. And it was just crazy thinking about the excitement of when this is going to become a movie and when the next book was going to come out and all the characters. The characters are really well written and you fall in love with them. Um, but this series, I think if I reread it now, I, I wouldn't enjoy it. And I think that's because for me, as I've gotten older, these books aren't as relevant to me and the characters. But I know that everyone loves them and I loved these books when they first came out and The Infernal Devices will always be one of my favourite trilogies. The next one that I've got is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lani Taylor. Lani Taylor to me was like one of the first big fantasy writers that I ever read. I went from reading books like Fallen and Hush Hush which were all paranormal and very teenagey written to reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone which felt elite in comparison. Um, it kind of introduced me to that more like fantasy market that's outside of the YA genre and it just felt like I was in a whole different universe and I loved it so much. I automatically buy any Lani Taylor book ever since reading this one, which was my first one, and I am amazed by the way she writes her books and makes everything so realistic and vivid in your mind. My imagination goes crazy for her writing. It's fantastic. It's got a really good romance to it. It's got really good characters. Her friends are fantastic and the creatures that come out of this book too are really, really cool. Stepping it back towards some more of like the really YA supernatural books, we have Shiver by Maggie Starfader. I don't even know what happened to my actual covers of these books. My entire trilogy just doesn't have dust jackets. But this book series I have actually reread. It was one of the first series I ever reread. Um, and I reread it with my friends. The book itself, when I first read it, I, I loved it. Um, I really liked werewolves as part of a, a book plot point originally. It was one of my favourite kind of genres to read. This one was more of a they turn into wolves than actual werewolves. But I thought it was really cool. 
I, when I reread this book, which probably still would have been about six years or so ago, I did not enjoy it as much. I can 100% say that. It was a really quick read through. I found that the book itself you could pick up and put down very, very quickly, um, but I did read it pretty fast. I definitely did not enjoy it the second time around. There was a lot of things in here that just did not make sense and had me rolling my eyes quite a lot. So this is going to be me trying to remember the actual plot because it doesn't have it written on the back of here because I don't have a dust jacket. Something happens. She, I'm pretty sure she almost died, but fast forward, she, I'm pretty sure she works in like a bookstore or something that your typical main YA character does. And this guy comes in and she starts to like this guy and then she finds out there's a secret about this guy and he's basically this wolf. And things unravel and there's secrets about her and it kind of follows their story. It's a trilogy and I think that she did a spin-off series after as well. Next up is a book that I definitely look back on and I didn't enjoy it as much as I originally thought I did and that was Looking for Alaska by John Green. When I first read this book I was just jumping on the John Green bandwagon. I just finished The Fault in Our Stars and my heart had been broken. And then I'd read a few of his other books which just didn't hit that five star rating for me. And then I read Looking for Alaska. The reason that I actually gave Looking for Alaska such a big rating eventually um, was because there was topics in this book that I found really were relatable. Um, in Looking for Alaska, this basically follows Alaska Young, um, where your main character Miles meets her and he falls in love with her essentially, but he also becomes weirdly obsessed with her and decides to follow this path of clues to try to find out where she's gone missing to, but he doesn't realise that like her life does not revolve around him. Um, and I really like that because this was one of those books where it just wasn't a romance. As much as this guy I wanted to hope it would be, it just wasn't a romance. Alaska was basically just like, I want to do my own thing. And I really appreciated that out of all these books. Um, but looking back at it, I'm pretty sure this story was just nothing for the entire time. As I've gotten older, I have stepped away from a lot of like YA contemporary. Mostly because these guys are teenagers and I really struggle to put my mindset back into a teenager mindset. If I reread the series now, I just wouldn't enjoy it, but that's purely because I don't relate to it. The book itself is probably still as good as it was when I originally read it, but I just wouldn't be able to give it the justice it probably deserves. But you can tell I like the book series too, because I had three editions of it, and I'm pretty sure like some of these were very special ones. Oh, that one was signed. And speaking of having multiple copies of it, the series that I still really enjoy is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. This has become a movie recently with Daisy Ridley and Tom Holland. I watched it and I was a little confused to be honest with you, but I still thought it was pretty good and I do hope that they make the rest of the series because I really love the series. I do think it would be really, really good as a TV show though and kind of really, really delve into the entirety of the book. So this is my original copy of Enough of Never Letting Go. This book follows Todd Hewitt. Um, he lives in a town where you can basically hear each other's voices and it's just filled with men. And then one day a girl comes into their town who is called Violet and Todd and his dog Manchie decide to help Violet escape these men because they have a very dark secret behind them and a chase ensues as they try to find a safe haven for them to live. This series was like one of the first dystopian series that I read and that means that it also got like the top of the cake for book series like that. I really loved it and I thought that the idea of it was really unique and the way that it was written was really cool. Um, so when these guys, I say they can hear each other's thoughts, this is how it's written in the book which looks a bit confusing to start off with but it really emphasised the story and it really made it like as great as it should be. So I really like that and this series I think is one that if I reread it I would still enjoy it just as much. Um, I really like animals as well so having getting to hear your animals thoughts I thought was really cool and part of me really wish that that aspect could come into the real world. And the last book that I have was one that was really important to me. I read this series as it was released and it was like the biggest thing waiting for the next book to come out and then you would read it and all these characters and the emotions and I cried many many times during this series and I just really enjoyed it. And that is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I not only devoured this series but I also devoured her other series which was Bloodlines. This one has two friends. There's Lisa, who is a princess, and she is a bigger type of vampire. I can't remember all the names of them all, um, but it's set in a world where there's like levels of vampires. Um, 
Okay, all right. Let me let me recap that. You got the Strigoi, who are the really bad vampires. Um, the fiercest ones, the ones who don't die, and they will be the ones that suck the blood and kill people and other vampires. Then you have the Maroi. Um, Lisa is a Maroi princess. She is a mortal vampire with a gift of harnessing the Earth's magic. Most of the Maroi tend to have magical talents. Um, and then her best friend is Rose Hathaway, who was my biggest fictional crush. Um, she is a powerful blend of human and vampire and she also works as basically the defense um soldier sort of character in this um so rose and lisa go to the same school rose is trained to be lisa's bodyguard essentially and it's kind of following them as they go through school there's romances in the series for each character and it was really, really good. There's some plot twists in the actual series, which I remember was like the end of the world for me. And my heart broke many, many times. And I really, really, really enjoyed this series. I think if I read it now, it would not be anywhere near as good as I remember. But I think I would be very nostalgic and I would love to be back in this world with the characters. And for that, I'd probably still enjoy it. But I wouldn't say it'd be five star rating anymore. So that's some of the books that I read um, when I first started on Goodreads that I really, really enjoyed. There's definitely some that I also didn't enjoy as much, but I wanted to talk about the ones that had some big feelings and emotions for me that I also really enjoyed and that impacted me when I was growing up. Let me know in the comments down below some of your favourite books that you read from 8, 5, 10 years ago, however long ago was your favourite books growing up as a teenager. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.